Barney writes, uh, I keep hearing y'all call Social Security an entitlement, but seems as though the definition of entitlement would be receiving something that you have done nothing to deserve. Nick and I, he's writing this, uh, are the last of the baby boomers born in 1964, and I have resented the theft from my paycheck for 45 years. I agree that we as a nation have been screwed by the Ponzi scheme of Social Security, but I also feel I deserve the money I paid in. I also know that my money was used to support those before me, but in a business perspective, I have the right to the money I paid in. Write me a check. I'll forgive what I could have received in interest by anyone with half a brain. Your thoughts, please. I will just uh, cut in quickly. I hear this whenever I use the word entitlement. People get mad, and I always just use it as the, you are entitled to it legally. Um, although Nick might have... Uh, a rejoinder to even that description. Nick, what say you as uh, besides just the Generation Jones erasure happening in this? I, uh, I feel his pain uh, tremendously. Um, but uh, the fact of the matter is, is you're not entitled legally to your Social Security. Uh, there was a 1960 case, Fleming v. Nestor, which involved a Bulgarian immigrant who was deported after it became clear that he had belonged to the Communist Party and had lied on his uh, entry into the country, but he sued after he was deported to uh, get his Social Security. And uh, the court said, nobody has an expectation. It's not a property right, like you don't own it. Um, is it realistic that the government will like massive, you know, on a, on a mass level, not pay out Social Security when they don't have to anymore or they don't want to? That's unlikely, but it's important. We, we don't have a right to it. That, and that should add to the anger over the ridiculousness of Social Security um, and the fact that it is it does not make enough money to cover its payouts um, and it needs to stop. And I would say to Barney, um, again, I feel the pain. I would be happy if this would provoke a political solution. I'm willing to walk away from it, uh, you know, and and just like be like, OK, just stop stop taxing me for it. And I don't get anything. That's the trade that I'm willing to take, because otherwise I don't think there's a way to do that. Uh, the current benefit in um, 2024, uh, the the average payout, which is distinct from the median, obviously, but is about $1,900. I would much rather see if we are going to have trans mass transfer programs, uh, have that money go to people who are poor and who need temporary assistance or temporary help or even long-term help uh, and get rid of old age requirement, uh, old age entitlements, period. Uh, they were passed, you know, first with Social Security in the Depression when being old meant you were likely to die uh, and you didn't have retirement. And then with Medicare, which was called the last act of the New Deal by LBJ and its other um, big proponents, uh, times have changed. And well, old people are wealthy people and they should be funding their lifestyles accordingly. And it's going to be ugly, uh, but we need to have an actual shift point where we say, OK, this system, whatever, however it might have functioned in the past, it no longer is relevant to what we are now. And we need to change how we do this. Um, Catherine, are you going to be marching on the uh, National Mall with a uh, get your statist hands off my Social Security sign? Absolutely. I've already got it. I've already got some poster board and some Crayola markers. I'm ready to go. Crayola, um, by the way, 80 percent of the uh, non-toxic oh crayon. Don't tell market. Lena Khan. Yeah. She's going to yeah. come for my my box of 64 yeah. uh, colors. Um <laughs> It's got that's the one with a little sharpener in the back, yeah, which is, is you know, so that's wonderful. the kind yeah. of special perk that only oh Crayola yeah. users get, which is, you know, if you think about it, basically a crime. Um, OK, so, yeah, I mean, you know, in the Republican budget plan, the initial Republican budget plan, there was this idea maybe they were going to just try again to raise the age of Social Security eligibility by a couple of years. Everybody panic um, like it was, you know, this is I don't think that our letter writer has to worry. Because the spectacular unseriousness of the U.S. Congress uh, in dealing with this question, like, payouts will be continuing to people Nick's age, to people the letter letter writer's age. Uh, unfortunately, um, yeah, the question the question uh, I think is still a little bit more of a live one for younger folks. And of course, I would love to see a system where we could um, opt out of, uh, as Nick says, opt out of paying in, maintain our own retirement accounts, whatever it is. Um, there are so many better options. But you know the fact is, 
I I pay taxes and and everyone pays taxes for lots of things that we are entitled to in the conventional sense that we don't receive, like a good public education. Uh, many many people pay dutifully pay their taxes and don't have a functional school that they can you know feel comfortable sending their kids to. I don't know, like roads, uh, you know, <laughs> more roads. Uh, you know, they they exist. They're full of potholes that might, for example, take you out and break your knee. This is, you know, this is these are basic expectations. These are entitlements, again, in the conventional sense that we are supposed to have because we are taxpayers. Um, we're not going to get them. It doesn't matter whether you feel you deserve them. Um, the government is bad at providing these services and they are going to be particularly bad, I think, at paying off um, you know, anything that looks remotely like the promises that were made about Social Security to younger people. But honestly, the letter writer is probably fine. So I guess congratulations to him. She said uh, bitterly. Peter, uh, Peter, I was kind of surprised to read the news from, I think, last week that the Republican Study Committee, one of those things uh, in the on Capitol Hill, um, did, in fact, come out and say, yeah, we should maybe extend a year or two um, uh, the uh, the time when people start getting their uh, Social Security monies. Um, what uh, I'm surprised just because the modern GOP led by Donald Trump has made running against any kind of tweaking to entitlements um, central to their worldview. Uh, what did that tell us, if anything, about uh, where Republicans are in seriousness about even acknowledging the cruel, cruel math that used to be a just a bipartisan no brainer was a problem that needs to be fixed in the future? Well, do recall that the Republican Study Committee is one of the more conservative organizations, collections of Republicans on Capitol Hill. And so what they say isn't necessarily what the entire party believes. I think the thing that I would want to stress to the letter writer here is that if you got all the money that you paid into Social Security, if they just wrote you a check that is equal to the dollar value, that would be far less than the expected value of your Social Security entitlement payout. Uh, almost certainly, uh, because that is true for the vast, vast majority of beneficiaries. And so you see these polls, I think Reason may even have done some at, at some point where you ask people, well, would you be okay with Social Security if you just got the money that you'd paid in back? And people say, yeah, but then you tell them that's going to be a lot less than the Social Security that you would have gotten under the current system. They're like, oh, wait, I'm not sure I support that. But that gap, the fact that the amount that you paid in doesn't equal the amount that Social Security owes you under its payment scheme, that is the problem is that there's not enough money in the system to pay for Social Security's obligations. And Social Security and health care costs, and uh, in part because of the changing demographics with more people uh, living longer and uh, after retirement, those are the biggest drivers of the long-term debt. And so if you want to take, the, take a pulse of the Republican Party and where it's at on this stuff, uh, I would actually point you to what Speaker of the House Mike Johnson said on CNBC last week, where he said, you know, he would, he would support a fiscal commission to take a look at doing something about the debt just so a long commission. as it doesn't just so long as that commission took off the table at the beginning, raising taxes or doing anything to entitlements. I, too, support losing weight without uh, in any way changing my diet or my exercise. That sounds great. But that's basically what he's proposing. The uh, you know, the the fact of the matter is Social Security benefits, uh, they both keep going up and then they keep getting kind of dinged because you actually end up paying tax on a lot of Social Security income or more than you used to. Uh, over the past three years, in 2022, the COLA, the cost of living adjustment for Social Security was 8.7 percent. It was 5.9 percent last year, and this year it's going to be a mere 3.2 percent. So it goes up, but then you get you know you get taxed on it, uh, and then it causes a bigger imbalance that Peter was talking about. And the the real kicker is every couple of years the amount of income that is subject to Social Security taxes goes up. It's currently around 160 grand, which is a lot of money, and it used to top out you know like a hundred thousand dollars, 110 thousand. So what um, you know, and the retirement age goes up by a month or two for each year. Um, you know that you retire up to sixty nine. Um, so we're going to get squeezed. And the question is, do we want to try and like keep maintaining a really leaking boat and a rickety ship or whatever metaphor you want to use that is really falling apart and is not doing its primary function anyway, which is providing 
for a retirement for old people? Or do we want to admit that, okay, we've learned from this experiment and it's a teardown and we need to build a different system to help people who need it, uh, you know, going forward into the 21st century? Between this and the Titanic reference, I think what Nick is telling us is that he is ready to go on his like retirement cruise. Like he's yeah, I he's out of here. He wants to as be long in the as it's line. not a reason cruise. Okay, R.I.P. the reason cruises. Yeah. I never got to go on one. That was a clip from the latest Reason Roundtable. If you want to see more clips, go here. If you want to see the whole episode, go here. Make sure to subscribe at Reason's YouTube channel or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks for listening watching, or both.